Hello everyone and welcome to the Nimiton. Today we are doing something quite special. I'm going to be doing a brief talk. This is not scripted or pre-recorded. I do not have an idea of exactly what I will show visually, if anything, but I feel like it has been on my mind a lot lately and it's something that is worthwhile for discussion. So, lately I've been reconsidering my values as it relates to other styles and belief systems. I've been looking a little differently at how other people get into mysticism and what it is that they value. And I've realized something quite key. It is not that there is some grand synchronicity between all of these beliefs, as much as it is that each one represents a particular aspect of the human experience. It is not so specific in that it is a very particular part of that experience, but they are all conjoined and that they value, to some extent, the idea of living and the idea of knowing something beyond oneself. Initiation is, realistically, nothing more than a desire to be part of a group. Our cultural ideals of what it is to be connected, what it is to be together, what it is to be a community, are all reflected into this. And beyond initiation, the idea of learning and progression is heavily rooted in the same desires of a human being wanting to be more deeply connected with the other people that they deal with. There's, in a sense, nothing special about it. And at the same time, I feel that each style, let's say, Thelema, witchcraft, Kabbalah, Christian mysticism, heck, even the crazy cults, have to some extent attempted to mimic and emulate the idea of an experience that is both theological, spiritual, and ultimately human. To consider this more seriously, it goes like this. In one part of the world, a rock is a rock. And in the other part of the world, that rock is also a rock. They follow the same physical principles. They might look a little different due to their geography, but ultimately, they all fulfill the same needs. And because of this, we will always see a deeply entrenched, we might say, commonality between all belief systems. Something that is unavoidably true to life. The only absurdities that exist come out of metaphysics, and even that tends to be philosophically sound and to follow similar principles. We need look no further than Kabbalah's metaphysical system versus the tattvas. I should say specifically the 32 tattvas, which reflect a similarity of belief. So, I suppose what I'm really doing here is I'm posing a question to you as a listener and to myself as a learner, or I should say to both of us as a learner. Why are we here? What is it so much that we are looking for? Why do we spend so much time looking to validate ourselves outside of normalcy? What has normalcy not given us that we believe we will find in occultism and spirituality? What do we believe we will seek or discover in certain ritual? And I have come to one conclusion. We believe that in one way or another, spirituality will release us from what we see as the negative aspects of everyday living. But the further and further we go, the more we realize that that human element mentioned earlier is so integral to the experience overall, whether it be mundane or spiritual, that there is no escaping it. There is no way outside of that box. So, to a certain extent, we need to accept that box. I believe the philosophers do a phenomenal job of analyzing mysticism from this perspective, looking no further than someone like Gershom Sholem, who, while very interested in the Zohar and the Orthodox Judaic sects, was himself quite secular and was very observant in how he looked at all of these philosophies, ideas, and mystics. But he still put a lot of time into it. So what was he looking for? What was Shulam hoping to discover in analyzing all of these antiquated mystical ideas and philosophies? Or we might even ask, what did the Zohar in its publication hope to achieve in the greater scheme of things? Who was it meant for? What was it to do? 
or we might even go into the more common occult. What did Crowley actually hope to achieve? Was he hoping that people would simply revere him and that he could be regarded based on his egotistical understanding of himself as the beast? Or did he look to give someone at least something? And I believe that they are all looking to give people something. They are all looking to give all of us an experience that differentiates itself from everyday living. All of us, in one way or another, are desperately hoping to get away from our own problems. And through this, we seek mysticism as a means around the common gates and the common struggles. And we hope that it at least connects us to a certain spiritual source. Each belief seems to have its own source, or it at least tries to determine that it does by name or by characterization. However, we know that philosophically this is ridiculous. If we look, let's say, to the Kabbalah, and we look to Ein Sof and the infinite nothingness therein, we will acknowledge that all possibilities for expression make themselves known there. They are pre-existent, and they are expressed outwards, but they do not come down as ideas that then attack people or confront people and demand to be known. Rather, they are expressed through people as if the individual themselves represents that idea and then brings it into the world to be realized. And of course, we know very obviously that ideas that are expressed are found by others, some are appreciated, and some are not. Just like any artistic expression, a belief is like a painting, and it is constantly changing. It is constantly touched by new hands and new minds, and spoken by new mouths, and all of this is a consistently evolving state of being, just like us. Spirituality is mobile, and in being mobile, it is also desirous to be discovered, because we as people desire to share. And I think that is the true point of all mysticism. To be known, to be shared, <laughs> and to be frank, Preferably adored. I know many of us are very self-righteous in that regard. Anyways, this is a very brief talk. This has been River at the Nimitan. And you know, as always, I'll see you next time.